In this video, we're going to step through how to create a workflow against a SharePoint list. At this point, I've already activated the respective K2 for SharePoint app against the site where this list is created, so we can get to the K2 menu options in the top menu for this list. I'll open that up and select Application from the menu to head over to the Create K2 Application page. If you happen to be using the classic view for your SharePoint lists and libraries, you can get to the K2 menu grouping of options for your list or library by selecting the list or library tab here at the top. Then go over to the K2 group of buttons and select application from there. Select the create new application button shown here on the screen. Upon doing this, you will be taken to a page where you will now have the options to pick what you want to have K2 create for an application tied to this list. This includes the K2 elements of Smart Objects for your data, which is selected by default. You can also select to have Smart Forms, a workflow, and reports created for this application. I'm only going to select to create a workflow for this example. When you put a check in the workflow box, the next thing you will need to decide is what you would like to name this workflow and how you would like it to be started. Because I didn't create smart forms for this list, we're going to set it up to start workflow instances based upon SharePoint events. I'll select when an item was added and click OK to move on. This is going to initially configure this workflow to start an instance whenever a list item is added to the SharePoint list, and the workflow will have access to information about that list item as it runs. After K2 creates the necessary smart objects, it will drop you onto the workflow design canvas where you can begin adding different user and system tasks to build out your workflow. For this workflow, I'm going to add a user task asking for a human user to make an approval decision. Then I'll drop in a decision task that will send the workflow in a direction based on the decision our user makes. If they approve, we will send an email message to the workflow originator stating that fact. If their decision is to reject, then we will set up a task to delete the list item from the SharePoint list. To get a user task step, open the toolbox menu over here on the left, and you can either drag it over to the canvas from the basic list of tasks, or you can drag it over from the favorites bar. When you drop the task onto the design canvas, you will be able to configure it by then opening the configuration panel over on the right. Click the arrow icon here in the upper right to open that section up. To speed this up, I'm actually going to select both Approve and Reject here for this task by clicking on the word Both under Actions here. Make a note, you can add your own custom actions here as well. I'll also add some instructions for my task recipients telling them what I need them to do with this task in the Instructions text box here at the top. The rest of the settings are good at their default state, but you do have the ability to configure recipients for this task, the task notification email message, and various other settings, including result rules and reminders if necessary. At this point in the workflow, we have two directions the instance will be able to go based on if the user selects to approve or reject their task. We can configure that by dropping a decision step onto the canvas just under the user task. I'll grab that from the toolbox as well. You can find it typically here on the favorites bar or down in the logic group of menu options. Once this step is on the canvas, you can hover over your user task near the edge depending on where you want your workflow line to come out. Click and hold down on the plus icon that appears and drag a line connector down to the decision step. Now, this automatically populates the step based on the named outcomes from your user task. Next, drag lines the same way out of this step for the approved path and also the rejected path as demonstrated here on my screen. For the first step coming out of the approved path, I'm going to drag over a send email step from the favorites bar here on the left. This step can also be found in the basic menu group. By default, this message is configured to go to the workflow originator to let this person know that their list item has been approved. You can change who this message goes to over in the configuration panel on the right if necessary. You also have the ability to edit the subject and body of the message for more clarity. I'll add some static text to the subject line stating that a list item has been approved. 
Then, because K2 keeps a reference pointer back to the list item in SharePoint that actually starts the workflow instance, we can drag the title field reference over to this subject line as I'll show by first opening up the context browser. The first tab in here has a reference to the SharePoint item from which we can access and drag the list items title column over and drop into the subject line of the message wherever we choose. You can do this with any of the columns shown here. Then at runtime, K2 will replace this placeholder with the actual value of this column in the list item from SharePoint. You can also add text and field references to the body of the message from the SharePoint list item if necessary. That's all I'm going to configure for this message for now. Let's move on and set up what needs to happen if the user rejects the list item. In this case, we want to actually have the workflow go and just delete the list item from SharePoint. This can be done by opening up the SharePoint list of tasks in the toolbox on the left, drill down into the list items group, and drag the delete list item step over to the empty slot on the canvas. That looks good. Now to configure this and tell it which list item to remove from SharePoint, K2 automatically provides a reference to the list item in the dropdown list under the pick list item heading in the configuration panel for this step. I'll select that from the list and that will do it. Upon configuring that step, the workflow is ready to go. So we can deploy it out to the K2 environment by going up to the file menu option in the upper left of the page select deploy from the options that appear, and K2 will bundle up the workflow and deploy it. At the same time, it's taking care of making sure the workflow is tied into the list so that it will start when an item is added.